All right, hello everyone, and welcome to my Stampin' Studio. I'm Tina Rappi. <clears throat> I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a cold. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do the Facebook Live today because earlier today I felt terrible, but I feel like I'm starting to come out of it now. So here we are, and we're gonna make the cute little treat packages that I had shared with you on the Facebook post the other day. A um, lot of things to talk about today, but the first thing that I wanted to do is talk about the products that I'm using for tonight's um, projects. And so we have designer paper. Well, let me back up. In the new mini catalog that starts in January, um, we got a sneak peek, a preview as demonstrators that we could order one of the stamp sets and dies that are going to be in that catalog. And they came out with a uh, designer paper that coordinates with it and some embellishments. And so these are available for um, customers to purchase now um, in November and December. And when these, uh, when the paper and the embellishments are gone, they're gone, um, but the stamp set will carry over. So this is the one stamp set, and I know you're seeing it backwards, but this is framed florets. And then there are dies that coordinate with that. So these will be in the, um, the spring catalog that starts in January. And then they also came out with this one called Framed and Festive. And this one is a lot of Christmas sentiment. So I've been using this quite a bit lately on things. Um, and that's only available until January 4th. Now, let me show you some of this beautiful designer paper in this pack. So I've been using lots of it. So there are um, some tiny pieces of some. But it's stuff that could be used for any occasions. This, what I've done with this in the past is colored these little white berries in with Cherry Cobbler Stampin' Blends and it looks beautiful. Um, this paper, which has these flowers and some of these flowers can be cut out with the dies. And then there's that side. Um, we've got this with a gingham plaid on the back. Let's see, I showed you those. Just a couple more. This one with smaller flowers. And then we have that on the back side. That might be it. Let's see, yep, I showed you that, I showed you that, I showed you that. Okay, so that is all of the papers. So we're gonna be using um, these papers on each of the projects tonight. And on uh, some of them, we will be using that framed florets um, stamp set and the dies. Um, and before we jump down to it, I just want to show you, I had joined a um, card swap with other demonstrators. And maybe what I'll do though, because if I hold these up for you, everything's going to be backwards. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to move the camera now and get it pointed down. So hang on here while I do that. Right now you get to see my ceiling. All right, let me get this in here. Oops. So bear with me for a minute. I got a new phone uh, cover. Uh, for my phone and so things hook up just a tiny bit different than before. Okay, make sure we've got everything where we can see it. This way. Okay, all right, so let me just show you some of these different cards then. And there are tons of them. So some of these are ones that I had done and some are ones that other demonstrators had done. But so the framelets um, here do these ovals and do these hearts around it with the oval cut out. And it also does the flowers. And this one.
So just tons and tons of different ideas here with them. And like I said, this paper will be gone. Um, the longest it will be around will be um, January 4th. There are embellishments in this collection too that look like this. These have already sold out. Huh. Helen, did I get sick on my trip? No, I did not. Felt wonderful on the trip. And uh, yesterday I started sneezing. And by the time I got home last night, I was so stuffed up. All right, then we have this one. We're getting near the end here. Yeah, my husband and I, we went to Prague um, over Thanksgiving. His sister lives there half the year and in Boston half the year. And she's considering giving up Prague. So we decided we better get there before she does. Now here's one that uses the frame florets and this, and then that extra stamp set, that framed and festive. So I've got a few Christmas ones that use that. Okay, so that just gives you an idea of different things that you can do with things from the bundle. Um, before I get everything else out here, uh, last time, two weeks ago when we got together, I said I would do a drawing of those people who commented um, and shared the, um, the Facebook page. Uh, live or the YouTube video. And so I put all the names in a hat and pulled it out. And the winner is, and I apologize if I'm not saying this right, Librata Cardenas. Librata Cardenas. You are the winner of these. So I just need you to pop on and send me your address. Okay. You can also contact me through my blog stampinstudio.com and there's a spot there for contact me um, where it will come only to me and um, I can get your your address so you don't have to post it out to everybody. All right so let's start. Oh and by the way those that uh, comment and share on today's post the one and only that's left these are the gold adhesive back swirls. They are no longer available, but I have one set. And so I will draw a name from those who share and comment. So this is what we're going to make first. Okay. Have you ever seen, let me grab the container. If you are a Costco member, these Dark chocolate sea salt caramels are the best. Absolutely the best. And so we're making this little container to hold them. All right. And then it has this little belly band around it. So let me show you how to do this. We're going to start out with the car or the, the box base. And this measures six by six. And this is, um, <laughs> I want to say bashful blue, if that's not what it's called. It is balmy blue. And I actually need to get another piece of it out here because we're going to need it. Okay. So this is six by six. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to score it. And we're going to score it on all sides at three quarters of an inch and one and a half inches. So we're going to rotate it three quarters of an inch and one and a half. I was going to do this ahead of time so you don't have to sit and watch me, but I know some people struggle um, grasping the concept of three dimensional things. Um, and putting them together unless they see it done. So that's why we have this. Okay, so it's scored at three quarters of an inch and one and a half on all four sides. Then I need my scissors. And what we're going to do, 
I'm actually going to turn the light on here so I can see a little bit better. I am going to, well, let me, let me do this first. I'm just going to quickly give a little fold to these so that maybe you guys can see this better. Did everybody have a great Thanksgiving? I will be working on um, Friday, getting my Christmas tree up because I'm doing a Christmas party for team members on Saturday. So that, uh, that will make me get it done. Okay, so what I'm doing is I am cutting up through both folds here in the middle. And then I'm going to just cut a little smidge off that side, okay? So you can see how this is kind of open. Now, we're not gonna do the sides here. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing here. Well, hi, Mary Beth. I see we got you back again. Welcome back. Hi, Jill. Jill happens to be my husband's cousin. Thanks for joining in. Okay, so let me just lay this down so that you can see. So we have, let's say, the front and the back cut on those score lines, and then we did little notches on both sides. Helen has you hooked. Yeah, she's good for that. <laughs> okay, now what we want to do, let me think here. We want to cut these ends off. So if you make these at home, you're just going to want to watch the video again, pause it to where we're at. Um, as in the past with my Wednesday workshops, if you place a $40 order, haha, <laughs> the dates here are wrong. Let me fix that. Between November 30th and December 3rd. This was the sheet from last time. Okay, so if you place a $40 order and use my host code, I will send you a packet of supplies to make these three projects. Everything will be scored and cut um, but just so that you know how to do it. Okay, so we cut off those corners from each, and now we're going to go up to the first fold. And so this is not on the side that we first cut. That's the thing that you want to pay attention to. And we are going to cut these little corners right off. Okay. So again, when you go to make your own, with the template, you'll cut it six by six and you will um, score it at three quarters of an inch and one and a half inches and then freeze frame the video if you need to so that you make sure that you cut the right parts of this off. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Let me get all my parts out of here. All right, so this is our box. Now, because I just lightly folded things, I now want to get the bone folder out and real crisply burnish each of the fold lines. And the, um, the more you burnish it on these score lines, the better your box will go together. It tends to want to pop apart if you have not burnished these enough. And that's, that's the case with any type of three-dimensional thing. Okay, so we have all of those done. Now, where did I put my glue? Right here. Let me grab my holder. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is fold each of these little tabs in. Ooh, that had a big gob of glue. Let me just try and take a little of that off and put over on this side because we all know with working with this glue, a little goes a long, long way. 
I'm going to grab a tissue to dab some of that off. <laughs> How do you like my raspy voice? Isn't that nice? <laughs> At least I still have a voice. Okay, so we have it there. Now what we're going to do is fold those sides up and attach it. And just hold it for just a short period of time. Okay, then we're going to do the next one. Bring it up and attach all the way around. Okay, so we now have a box. I'm going to fold these out just so you can see. Okay, we're going to get these nice and firm. Okay, so that's the main part of the box, but I want it nice and sturdy because we're going to be putting chocolates in there. So now I'm going to use the glue on the inside of these long tabs. And we're going to fold these all in. Okay. And once we have those folded in, back to my bone folder and burnish across there. And what that's doing, not only is it getting that fold nice and crisp, but it's also pushing um, that glue right down. Okay, there is the box, nice and firm. Now, the next thing is we need the little inserts in here. Okay, so how do we do that? I have a little cheat sheet here with my measurements. So I'm going to set that aside and bring in my paper trimmer. So we need some inserts. And the first one that we need is two and a half. So two and a half by two and 15 sixteenths. I know what you're thinking. You got to be kidding me. Now, let's just look really close up here at the little measurements. Do you see, we're not going to look at the centimeters here. We're going to go um, with, the, um, with the regular U.S. measurements. Each of these little lines is a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, so sixteen... Sixteenths is one whole inch. So 15 sixteenths, you could sit and count them all out. But I'll tell you, it's one little line short of the, of the three. Okay? Two inches and 15 sixteenths. So that's what we need. So we've got the two and a half there. So now we need two by 15 sixteenths. Okay. So there's our first piece. And with this, we're going to score it along here. We're going to score it at half an inch. And then one and a quarter inches. And then at two inches. Okay. So this is what we have, and we're going to fold it in half on the one score line. And then on the other score lines, we're going to fold those up. Hi, Donna. Thanks for sharing. You'll get your name in the drawing again. All right, so we've got that. Okay, so it's like this. Now what we're going to do is we are going to put glue here on the inside. And you really only need to put it on one side of it. And then we're going to secure that down. And again, I'm going to burnish it just to get the glue to really stick there. All right, so it's going to go like this, but we're not quite finished with it yet. We're just going to set it aside for now. Now we have to do two more um, little inserts. And these are four and three-eighths. Uh, and this piece isn't quite big enough. Let me grab another. Let's see if this one is. Yep. Okay. Four and three eighths. So let's talk about that. Here's the four inches. Okay. 
three eighths. An eighth of an inch is not the teeny tiny lines, but the next line. So here's one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. So it's between four and a quarter and four and a half. So that's where this is going to go. Four and three eighths. But again, remember, um, the kit is yours if, um, if you place an order of 50, uh, I'm sorry, of 40 um, between now and um, Saturday. Okay, four and three eighths by one and seven sixteenths. Okay, eight sixteenths would be a half an inch. So we're going one tiny little line before that. And we need two of these. Okay, so now we have two of these. Thanks, Jill. Thanks for sharing. Okay, we're going to score these. One and seven sixteenths. We just talked about where that measurement was. And then two and three sixteenths. Three little bitty lines. One, two, three. And then two and fifteen sixteenths. You guys are going to be old pros at these measurements. All right, we're going to do it one more time. So one and seven sixteenths, just shy of the half inch mark. And then two and three sixteenths. That's just shy of the two and a quarter. And then two and fifteen sixteenths, which is just shy of the three. All right, you set that aside. We're going to fold these the same, folding it in half, burnishing it and then bringing each of those other parts forward. Do I send the chocolate to? No, I don't. It gets eaten here pretty fast. All right, we'll get this. Hi, Connie. Stay warm. Yes, it got really cold here um, starting today. And so we've been so fortunate with our fall. Um, but a day like today makes me think about our cruise coming up in a couple of months. All right, so we put that adhesive in there, the glue, and then I'm gonna burnish that. And then we'll do the same thing on this. So it was just like we did on that longer, skinnier insert. Dave needs to share. Yeah, he actually, five years ago when I had my back surgery and I wasn't able um, to do things for a while, he actually held a class for me and um, it was a huge hit. And so then he did it again the next year. And yeah, so he's he's been really good. 65 days, but who's counting, Helen, right? Okay, here's our inserts. So one's going to go here in the middle. And then one's going to go here, and one's going to go here. But I don't want them all loose and flappy, so we're going to glue those in. So, let's get this back. So the first one is going to be a little forgiving. We're just going to kind of center it in here with our eyeballs. And then we'll do the other inserts. So as I put this second one in, I'm gonna scoot it all the way to one side and then I can move that center one over. All right, now this. Okay, so there are our inserts there to stay. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. Now let's do the lid. So this designer paper um, is, is one of the flitting florets. And this measures four and five eighths by four and five eighths. And we are going to score this at three quarters of an inch on all four sides, just three quarters of an inch. This one doesn't get double like before. Thank you for sharing, Charlotte. I appreciate that so much. You'll get your name in the drawing as well. Okay, so I have scored on all four sides. And again, let me just lightly fold this so you can see better. 
Okay, so there's our scores. Now, we are going to cut up and just trim a smidge off, okay? And we're going to cut up, cut a smidge off, and another smidge off, and do the same thing on the other side. So just my recommendation when you're doing these is Pay attention to where you're at. I have at times, I've done one side and then I turn it this way and cut it right off. And let me tell you, you don't want to do that. Okay, I've got to trim just a little bit off of here too. Okay, now before we make this into a box, we need to cut our circle. And so, once again, I'm going to my absolute favorite die set. And that is the Stylish Shapes. And I think y'all are listening to me because um, this set of dies is not available right now. They ran out of them. They'll be getting more, but they can't even be ordered right now. So this is going to get cut out. So let me bring my stamp cut and emboss machine up here. And I'm just eyeballing the center. And we'll get the plate here. Okay. So then we have this. Set this aside, use it on some other project because we don't need it for this. All right, and what we're gonna do, I have a window sheet, okay? And these can be ordered through my website as well. And so with, the, with this, this measures one tiny little notch less than three inches. So two and 15 sixteenths by two and 15 sixteenths. This is the inside and so I am going to put glue around the circle. And then this is going to get plopped right in here. Like that. Now we're going to make the lid very similar to the, um, the bottom of the box that we did. We're going to fold in those tabs Put the glue on here. All right, and then we're going to fold it up and stick the little tab next to it. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. You'll get your name in the drawing too. I just... Um, as a demonstrator, tomorrow is the day that we can order whatever we want out of the Spring Mini catalog. So I just got done um, making my whole big list out of what I want to get to start. There's a lot of really pretty things. Okay, so we've got that together. Get my bone folder out, make that all nice and crisp. Um, I believe the time is 2 o'clock mountain, but don't quote me on that. You'd be able to find it on the website. I will not be up doing it then. Okay, now we've got our chocolates, and these fit right here. Ha! <laughs> so kind of right up above me, off to my left a little bit, is the heating duct here. See what's going on? <laughs> All right, and then let's get our lid on here. Let me just wipe this off before I have a chocolate mess everywhere. Okay, then next we have the balmy blue, um, uh, what do they call it? Balmy blue double stitched ribbon. And so about nine inches of this. Yes, to start, that's the key word. Some things I know I really like, but I know I won't be using them right away. So they're on my, yep, I want it, but not quite yet list. 
And then, of course, when I start seeing things that other people make with stuff that maybe I didn't think I really liked all that much, then that gets added to my list, too. Okay, so I've got a mini glue dot here. I'm going to bring this across. So this end is not sticking down. And this end is just sticking to the ribbon. That way, we can slide it. It's a belly band. Okay, so now, let me get it where I want it. Okay. And then I used some of this paper, and I just picked one of the images, and this particular one, there's not a die that goes with it. But like this one, there is. You just lay that die right on top of it, right here, and cut it right out. But in this case, I, I chose a different one, and I figured you guys aren't really going to enjoy me uh, watching me just fussy cut. So we've got this here that I've already cut out, and now I have three packages of dimensionals out. You think I could find anything right now? Oh, here they are. All right, so I'm going to grab two dimensionals. And again, we want this belly band to slide. So... Let me scooch this over a little bit more here. All right. So I am going to put the dimensionals right on the ribbon, not on the box itself. Hey, Heather. Welcome. All right. Got that. And let's stick this on here. I like it. Let's do it this way. All right. There we have, and this is the more difficult one. There's nothing hard about it, just a lot of little steps, but you've got the video to watch and see um, over and over again how to do it. Okay, so the other ones are gonna go together quicker. I gotta move that chocolate away from the heating vent. <laughs> All right, next one. All right, we are going to make this little gift card holder. It fits in there perfectly. You could fold up some dollar bills and put in there. So I have the same piece of paper with the little flower things, and we are going to turn it this way. And the way that I made the little pocket is with the mini pocket envelope. Ta-da! This lays right on here and cuts it out. So, let me bring it over to my cutting machine. I won't drag that over there. I'll just do it over here on this side so it'll go a little bit quicker. All right. So, this is what we end up with. So, there are, it not only does it cut it out, but there are little score lines on here as well. Okay, so let's fold it on the score lines and burnish it. You know, a pair of earrings, how they come on those little cards, that would fit in here really well too. Let's get the glue. And with this, we wanna go sparingly because this is not a wide tab, but just a little bit of glue here. Fold this one up little bit of glue here. So we're not gluing it to this. We've got them folded up, put glue on the top, and now we're going to close this up and burnish it again. Just like that, that little pocket is done. Hey, Grace. All right. Now, where did I put my ribbon? Right here. So a little more of that ribbon, and this time it's going to be probably about five and a half inches or so. So just enough to wrap around it. And we're going to do the same thing with the glue dot. Okay. All right, and we'll put this across here. And now, 
for the embellishment on it, I wanted it to really coordinate with this. And there aren't any just blue flowers in that paper. So this time we're going to stamp. So I've got the stamp and pierce mat here and the memento ink and the image from the, um, <laughs> what is it called again? Frame florets. I think cause my nose is stuffy, my head's not functioning all the way either. All right, let's get that on there. Okay, so we have this. Now we're gonna do quick coloring. I love my stamp and blends because it makes things easy. So I'm using balmy blue, light and dark. And so I'm going to first of all color in the whole flower here with the light blue. Now you can do this with shading and everything else. Um, I like it solid and then I'll add some deeper highlights to it. It just goes quicker. Um, Otherwise, I tend to really overthink it, and that's that's not fun. You know what? I um, because earlier today I was freezing cold. Uh, my stamp studio is in our basement, and so the heat is up, and I shut my door. Um, and right now I'm roasting, so I'm gonna take a minute just to open the door. Okay. All right. So this is all colored in with the light balmy blue. And now I'm going to use the dark balmy blue to color other portions of this and give it some depth. So basically, wherever there are lines in the stamped image is where I add dark color. Okay, and then let's get over here. And then in the paper, in the designer paper, it lists on the back side all the colors that are in it. And it says um, Evening Evergreen, which is a super dark green color. Um, so like you can see it here. But when you color it with the blends, it's super duper dark. And I didn't want that. So I'm using um, soft succulent. And I'm going to do the leaves. See, and this is plenty dark. You know, if someone asked me to pick my absolute favorite Stampin' Up tools. I would have to say number one is the stamp cut and emboss machine, the die cutting machine, because um, you can add texture um, with embossing folders with it, and you can cut things out without having to fussy cut. But my second favorite thing is Stampin' Blends. Love them. Okay, so we've got that, and I am going to use this image to die cut that out. Let me just move over here. Too. So let's say I have not cut this out yet. So let me get it back in here. Sure. Sure, I can do that, right? There we go. All right. And you line this up over it. And you start to run it through and it wants to move. Okay. You can get some of this. It's from Post-it. It's a label roll. So it looks like tape, but it's sticky like a Post-it note. So you can take it get it on there where you need it, holding it in place, and then run it through. And then you can pop this out, and this can be reused a few times. Okay, so that's a great way to make sure that it's going to stay in place. All right, we have this. Get my little pouch back. 
And so I have the seam or the raw edges here. And I did that on purpose. So I'm calling this the front. And I did it on purpose because I want to cover that seam or those raw edges up. So I'm going to put the dimensionals right over the top of it so that it's not stuck to the envelope itself, but just to the ribbon. All right, and then we'll put this on. All right, and then you could add a little tag, you know, thinking of you for your birthday, you know, whatever, but don't forget to put the little treat inside. So that is project number two. Okay, are you ready for the last one here? Okay, get these back in here. We are making this little pouch. Now, um, Ghirardelli chocolates, you know, they're square. They fit in here real nicely. I didn't have any of those, so we're using Mr. Goodbar. You're not going to believe how easy this is. This measures 5 inches by 5 inches, okay? This is what I'm calling the outside, so I'm going to put that down. And now I'm just going to fold right up to the point and grab my bone folder and fold that, okay? So it's right in half. Now I'm gonna bring this top part right down so this point goes right on the fold, okay? So we'll get this lined up, put it right on the fold and crease this and then we'll burnish it. So there is no scoring, there is no measuring, there is nothing super simple. Okay, so now that we have that two folds, we're gonna unfold this and we're gonna bring this left side over so that this part right here matches up with this fold. Huh? Watch. Bring it right up here and put it right on that crease. All right, so let me show you that again. So it's this part here goes up to the crease like that. Then you're going to do the exact same thing with this on the right side, bringing it right up to that crease. All right, one step left here. Fold this back down. That's it. There's not even any adhesive on this. It holds it all together. So let's decorate it. So I have one of those uh, flowers from the designer paper. This cuts it out exactly. So let me grab my tape, get it all lined up here like that. Okay, let me run it through. Pop this out. Put my tape back on the holder to use again. All right, we are going to grab a couple dimensionals here. And I'm going to, well, let's do them um, about like that. And then this. is going right on there, and then you can put your little treat in. One, two. All right, so let me lay all the things back out here again. So we have the little treat pouch. We have the gift card holder or money holder or earring holder, whatever we want to call it. And then let me bring my chocolates back over here. And then we have our box of chocolates. Actually, I like it better this way. Yeah, the flowers seem like they're going in the right direction. So what do you think? Why don't you comment and let me know which is your favorite, the candy pouch, the gift card holder, or the box of chocolates, all right? And remember to share, and you will get your name in a drawing for these um, gold swirl adhesive-backed embellishments which can't be purchased anymore. And then one other thing that I want to let you know about, let me find it here. 
the holiday mini catalog because tomorrow starts December. Um, this Many of the things in here are going to be retiring. So if you go to my blog, stampinstudio.com, you can look at or print out the list of all the things that are retiring. And things are up to 60% off. Um, so it's quite a bargain on some things. Some things are going to sell out immediately, I know. Um, but yeah, so take advantage of that. And then also the clearance rack um, starting tomorrow will be updated too. So even more things at a greatly reduced price. So you can take advantage of that. So one reminder, if you want the materials to make this, uh, these projects, just place a minimum $40 order before shipping and tax between Wednesday, November 30th, which is today, and Saturday, December 3rd, which is Saturday. Okay, and make sure you use this host code. And then let me just look here. I have a few different notes. Make sure I've got everything covered. Yes, I do. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate it so much. And until we meet again, stay inspired and never stop creating. Bye-bye.